over Elizabeth's image. Speaking of the church, of course, it wasn't all easy for Elizabeth. There were the great threat from the Catholics. Uh, this, this was arguably the greatest threat to Elizabeth. So right at the start of her reign, she had the Act of Uniformity and the Act of Supremacy, which set out a fairly moderate view that they, people had to worship. They had to use the same common book, the common prayer book. They had to worship um, Elizabeth and recognise that she was the supreme head of the church, but it did allow some sort of tolerance. And at the beginning of her reign, there were three million Roman Catholics. Um, and most Catholics had completely dropped their faith by 1570 because of these slow changes and because there were fines that came in from not going to church. By the 1580s, we've got a slightly different situation. Most uh, Roman Catholics were conformers. Um, we had millions of Catholics who were church papists. That is that they would particularly um, in the north and the west that they would go to church. Um, they stayed loyal to the Pope, but did nothing to challenge the Queen. Um, but now, by the 1580s, we've got these recusants who refused to attend Protestant services, arranged their own services, and this is very much seen as a threat to Elizabeth. And we've got a very small number who were plotters, refused to attend the Catholic Protestant Church and actively opposed, but it is worth bearing in mind that they were a very small number. Now, the issue here is, is that as the threat from Spain grew and the possibilities of our Spanish Armada grew, then that threat increases. It all increased from 1570 when Pope Pius V excommunicated Elizabeth and freed English Catholics from supporting their Queen. It wouldn't have meant much to many Catholics, but this meant something to some Catholics. People like Francis Tresham started to refuse to go to church, started to display the Catholicism. So what did Elizabeth do about this? Well, here's the issue. Did they overreact? Well, 1581 Act of Persuasions increased the fine by about 10,000 percent to 20 pounds per month, which is the, about the income of most landowning gentry farms. So it became extremely expensive. So this was reserved mainly for the very rich, the, the recusants and non-fine payers could be imprisoned. The threat was was really increased over this time period, as I said, of this threat from the Spanish Armada. So we get an act against priests given death penalty. We have the Recusancy Act, uh, where they could take two thirds of the land who anyone who hadn't paid their fines. The horrible example of Margaret Clitheroe, who was tortured to death through pressing, as you can see in that bottom image, uh, sorry, the top image there. Uh, most influential Catholics were arrested as that threat increased in 1588 with the Spanish Armada. And then in 1593, they even restricted Catholics. There was still a threat of another Armada at that point, so which partly explains why that was the case. Now, the threat really was ramped up by foreign issues. So priests who didn't accept Elizabeth's Protestant church left, had left the country, but from 1570 started returning. Two different types of priests, so many priests um, gave secret services, but they didn't try and convert the Protestants. The Jesuit priests, much more direct loyalty to the Pope, and were trying to deepen Catholicism and convert everyone to Catholicism. Uh, we've got Robert Persons and Edmund Campion, who, at the latter of which, was hung, drawn and quartered, despite his declaring loyalty to the Queen. Over 100 new priests arrived from 1580, Travelling in disguise, often hiding in priest holds. Elizabeth used Justice of the Peace to check them out, but one of the most reliable ways was through her Walsingham's network of spies, um, people such as Anthony Munday, Charles Sled, and George Eliot, used to detect these priests. And you can see there, bottom left hand corner, one of these priest souls in action, tiny little space where the priests were hide. Now, after the execution of Edmund, Ed, Edward Campion, Catholics started using propaganda to suggest, showing awful images of the of the, the hung, drawn and quartering, um, criticising Elizabeth and her torturer, Richard Topcliffe. The government responded to its own counter propaganda, giving its own views and explained why it acted. And we mentioned this before, but the act against priests in 1585 is followed up by asking priests what's known as the bloody question which asks them if, if, they, if, they, if there was an invasion of a foreign power, would they be loyal to Elizabeth? If they were, they'd lose credibility as a priest, or would they be loyal to the Pope, in which case they were a traitor? A second threat, Mary Queen of Scots had fled to England because she was unwelcome in Scotland. They'd been, she'd been uh, ousted from power in Scotland. Elizabeth looked after her because she was a cousin, um, and she was held in England, 
but the very existence of Mary really did create a, a tangible threat to Elizabeth um, and she was placed under surveillance. Uh, first of all, she's implied in the failed Throckmorton plot, which had no direct link, but then brought about this bond of association, which said that even if there was no evidence that Mary knew about the plot, she could still be executed. And this brought her downfall with the Babington plot in 1586. Uh, letters were sent to Mary hidden in beer barrels. It was discovered by a spy. They broke the codes. Um, Elizabeth put Mary on trial. Mary put up a very strong defence saying she'd got no right to be put on trial and that the only evidence that linked her what had been had been drawn from uh, from people under torture and therefore wasn't reliable. However, Elizabeth reluctantly signed the warrant and Mary was executed. Elizabeth claimed that she didn't want the the execution to happen. She tried to withdraw her order um, and she was furious with Cecil for allowing it to be sent. We do probably think that she didn't know what she was doing um, and it was just a way of her trying to distance herself and say she was unhappy with what had occurred. We have lots of foreign threats during this time. Um, this really is the crux of the whole Catholic argument. If there had been no foreign threats, who knows? Of course, Mary's Elizabeth's sister Mary had married Philip of Spain. Um, Elizabeth herself had turned down Philip. And then a number of different things happen. We get uh, Drake and Hawkins and other English captains attacking Spanish ships for their gold. We get Elizabeth sending aid to the rebel Dutch Protestants fighting against the Spanish. You can understand why Philip was so angry about this. Um, as the threat builds, it seems like Elizabeth panicked. Um, 2,000 English troops were sent to fight the Spanish in 1585. Um, 1587, Drake raided Cadiz, known as the Singe and the King of Spain's beard, because he wrecked the Armada plans that were underway at the time. The execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, really did push Philip. And in 1588, the Armada set sail for England. I'm not surprised when the government set up its campaign. JPs arrested more accusants like Tresham, um, more, more priests, and you can see this steep spike in the amount of executions that occur in this time around this Spanish Armada. So that's a key thing for you to mention if you get this as a, as a key exam question. More priests were executed in this time than any other period as the threat from Spain grew. However, by 1603, almost all Catholics had given up their faith um, or attending Protestant church services without complaint. Philip of Spain died in 1598 and his son, Philip III, was a much weaker leader. Mary Queen of, Got Queen of Scots had gone, there was no one to replace Elizabeth. Um, and by the end of her reign, with all these measures in place, only about 40,000 Catholics were left in place.